In this video, I'm gonna share how I was able to purchase my first condo at the age of 19, and as a result, how I was able to make a profit of $113,000 in cash in my hand just five years later. So let's get into it. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Koken, and in this video, we share tips on real estate investing, money advice, and career building. So if those are of interest to you, consider subscribing. When I just graduated from high school, I had an offer to enroll in the University of Toronto in Mississauga in their business uh, administration program. I went on one of the campus tours and I noticed it was quite expensive to live on residence. At that time, it was around $850 per month for just a bedroom. Uh, and there was a mandatory meal plan that I would have needed to uh, sign up for. This sparked a little idea. Why don't I try to buy a house off campus, live in one of the bedrooms and rent out the rest of the rooms to my classmates? The little idea made me start to look at what homes were available for sale around the campus that had four bedrooms or more. And I actually ended up finding a condo building that had units with four bedrooms uh, available for sale. Now, for those of you who don't know, a condo or condominium is basically similar to an apartment building with a key difference. In a condo or a condominium, each of those units are owned by individual owners who contribute monthly. They pay a maintenance fee or a condo fee towards the overall upkeep of the building. So a couple of years pass and I'm 19 years old. At that point, I've decided not to go to university and simply decided to work. And at that time, my family was looking to move to this city, Sasaga. So we went shopping with our real estate agent and we took a look at some condos in the area. And one of the homes that we actually saw was a four bedroom unit that was available for sale in this building at that time. This is where things get interesting. My parents were interested in putting an offer on that four bedroom condo. And typically what happens is, you know, before you put an offer, you want to know what are the comparable sales for that home that you're trying to offer on. So you know what sold recently in this case, what other units have sold in the last say six months in this particular building. So our real estate agent gave us those comparable information and what I saw when I saw those comparables was there were actually some units that had sold that had five bedrooms or more. Things didn't actually work out with my parents. They put an offer, but there was some multiple offers and they actually lost that home in competition. However, from some previous conversations that I've had with other real estate investors who've bought student rentals, properties near a university or college that they rent out by the room to students, what they told me when in our conversations was that you typically need a home to have five bedrooms or more in order to create enough income to produce positive cash flow. So when I saw those five bedroom units, I really thought there's some potential here. What I decided to do was simply to look on realtor.ca, which was the public MLS every now and then, to see if any of these five bedroom units came up for sale. Now in hindsight, what I should have done is simply ask my real estate agent to set me up on a search for this particular building to see if any units come up for sale so that I get an email notification. I did it the hard way instead. <laughs> So a couple of weeks or months pass at this point and I just decide randomly one day to look for that building to see if any units had come for sale. And there it was. There was a five bedroom, two bathroom unit for sale listed at $250,000. So I called my real estate agent. We book an appointment to see the home right away and we put in our offer. We actually put in an offer for $240,000, $10,000 less than the list price. And the listing agent, the seller's agent, came back to us saying that the most recent sale in this building was a four bedroom unit and it sold for $250,000. So our unit is worth at least that since it has five bedrooms. To us as investors, that was absolutely true. We needed that fifth bedroom to make positive cash flow. Without it, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't make sense. However, they didn't know that, right? They thought we were just an average buyer looking to buy that home. So what we told them, we saw that other unit, we even placed an offer on the other unit, and that unit was in a much better renovated condition than this unit. This unit was still in really good shape. It was renovated, but the quality of the finishes was not really comparable to the last unit. A few hours later, our offer was accepted at $240,000. 
Within a couple of months, we took possession of the home and initially we rented out each room for $500 per month times five. So we were bringing in close to about $2,500 per month, which is pretty good for a purchase price of $240,000. Now in the five years that we've owned this property, what has ended up happening is we had this den in the condo that was really not being used for much. It was like a 10 by 11 size sort of den that was just left empty. It, was, it had a dining table, but there was already a pretty big living space, so it was kind of unused. What we did is we finished it, we put a wall, we made it a separate bedroom. We actually made that into a sixth bedroom that we could now rent to a sixth student. And in the five years we've owned this property, the rents in that area have increased from close to 500 to now close to $700. So we are making 700 per month times six. So this condo is bringing in close to $4,200 per month in monthly income. Some of you who are familiar with Mississauga may be wondering, how did we get this property for so cheap? Even five years ago, back in 2015, properties were not really cheap in the city of Mississauga. It's only a few minutes away from Toronto. There's a lot of people who live in Mississauga, commute to Toronto, so it is right there in the uh, greater Toronto area. One of the interesting things about this building was close to 10 years ago, there was fraud that happened in this building. Basically, a condominium property manager who was taking care of the building at that time defrauded the building. He forged some loan documents and he took out close to $10 million in loans on this property and he even made the monthly payments so that no one actually knew that there was this new loan he had forged and put on this building until he fled the country and he stopped making those loan payments and then the bank started calling the condominium board members and asking for payments. As a result, that $10 million loan needed to be paid off by the unit owners over the next 10 years. So uh, when I bought my unit in that building, it had been already close, I think seven or eight years since that fraud had happened. Once the fraud happened and then the building realized they needed to pay off this loan, they introduced a special assessment, which is an additional monthly fee on top of the regular condo fee. So it increased the monthly condo payment. As a result, the unit prices in this building actually were suppressed. For those of you who don't know, when a condo fee increases, generally it, it pushes down the sale prices in that building and sometimes even flat lines. And the reason for this is because everyone who's looking to purchase a condominium is also looking at what is their monthly total cost, right? What is their mortgage payment? What is their condo fee, their property tax? All in, how much money are they gonna spend? So the higher that condo fee is, the less they're willing to pay for the condo. And the reverse is also true. When the condo fee is lower, uh, people are willing to pay a little bit more to purchase these. That was one of the reasons why the purchase price of this condo was relatively a little bit lower than a similar condo in say another building or any other buildings in this area. When I purchased this condo for $240,000, we got a loan for 80%. So we had to come up with the 20% down payment. Now, this particular condo, was purchased between myself and my brother. So we split the down payment 50-50. We each ended up contributing around $25,000 each, total of about $50,000. That's sort of the down payment and you know your closing costs that come when you purchase a property. And by partnering together, we could combine our incomes to allow us to qualify for that mortgage that we needed to purchase this home as well. Five years later, this building is actually doing really well. So the Condo fee has actually reduced as that special assessment got paid off by year 10, about two or three years into our ownership of the property. They reduced the condo fee by around $100 a month and they've started to improve the building. So they've uh, renovated the elevators, done the balconies, and they're really starting to increase the uh, cosmetic look of this building, which is really helping to drive up the sale prices within this building. We actually benefited significantly from the overall market just doing really well over these last five years. The two most recent sales in this building for five bedroom units are actually at $540,000. $300,000 more than what we purchased our unit for just five years ago, which is more than a double 
During these five years, close to $18,000 of the mortgage has been paid off by us just making our regular uh, mortgage payments, which was paid for by the income that we brought in from renting the condo to students. In total, our profit was close to $318,000 in total, and my share of it was $150. $9,000. Next, we went back to the bank and asked if we could refinance our mortgage. For those of you who don't know, a refinance is when you get a new mortgage on a property you already own and you use those funds to pay off the existing mortgage and people do this for various reasons. You could be trying to get a lower interest rate, you may be looking to reduce your monthly payments by extending the period of the loan, or you may be looking to take a cash out refinance by increasing the loan amount. In our case, we actually did both. We were able to extend the period of the loan, we were able to drop our interest rate from 3% to 2.5% because rates have come down quite a bit recently, and we were able to increase our mortgage. We took a new mortgage out for $400,000, and we paid off our old mortgage, which was which had about $175,000 left. So we were able to pull a cash out refinance of close to $225,000. $225,000 is actually cash in our bank and it's split between myself and my brother. So my portion is close to $112,000, $113,000. Not bad for an initial investment of just $25,000. Plus, I get to still keep my ownership of that half of the condo. So if it appreciates more, if the mortgage gets paid down more, and uh, if there is any cash flow, I still get half of that. So I still keep my ownership in this property, except now I have these funds that I can use to purchase another rental property. Um, and it's sufficient for me to actually go out and buy a rental property by myself. So my initial investment of $25,000 is now going to allow me to own close to one and a half rental properties. Not bad. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions for me, you know, comment down below. Uh, if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are interested in investing in the Niagara region, that is where I focus most of my attention right now. Uh, that's where I see most of the investment opportunities. I've created a guide to investing in the Niagara region. It's a free guide that you can uh, get sent to your email. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link in the uh, comments below. Uh, so consider subscribing. Till next time, all the best.